Right, so Excel can be a bit quick and dirty, but you know, at least effective, I suppose. Uh, so imagine you've got some data points here and you have an error bar. You could probably assemble a graph that looks like this in mere seconds. It's like insert graph, add error bars, custom value, insert it. It's barely a dozen button clicks, to be honest. And maybe if you want to change it, there are various design options to fiddle around with it and play about with it, see what it looks like. Um, but if you want to make it more interesting and more flexible, that can be a little bit of a challenge, especially with error bars, because you don't really get many options. You just get whether they're there or not, and a couple of the basic like line options with arrows and so on, and that's a little bit unpredictable and not not great. So we're going to try something uh, a little bit different. We're going to build something a bit more infographic-y. And here is kind of the end result that we're going to look at. So just some icons, some error bars. They're formatted a little bit uh, differently and a little bit more flexibly. We could make the these change size uh, as we want. Oops. Uh, and I'll show you how to do this. The basics around it are that this is a stacked bar chart. So there are different uh, series that actually come together to build this. And the idea of hacking stacked bar charts is actually quite extensible. You can you can do a lot of things with that. You can build things like this. You can build more interesting looking uh, box and whisker charts. So maybe it's not the most staid and professional uh, looking chart, but it is that visually engaging um, infographic opinion uh, kind of visual and noticeably it's also it's dynamic if you start changing any of these numbers uh, it should all update no problem so let's go ahead and show how to do it so I've got the data here this is your data if you're doing this as a report that's your data table uh, this is how we're going to actually build it using these. So the first thing is a bar I've called support. This is just an invisible bar at the very bottom of that stack bar chart. So we need to figure out how far up the first error bar is. And well, that is basically your data minus your error. And then I'm going to put something in for the bar itself. I'm going to make that 0.2 for now. Uh, and the upper bar, I'm going to also make 0.2. And then I'm going to put a marker in the middle that's going to be a custom thing. You can do this. Um, you don't have to do it this way. I'm just going to add it in for the sake of it. That's going to be one high. And I'm going to add in a label at the top, just as like an option if you wanted to put your icon there. I'm going to make that one high. That will also be set to transparent later. Now, that remains, how big are your error bars now? So we know what the error bars are size-wise, but we've used part of the stacked bar chart to create a bar and a bit of a marker. So we're going to subtract that bar's size. We're also going to subtract the marker, but actually only half of it, divided by two. So the same thing here. We're going to do the error bar minus little bar that we're going to stick on top minus half of that marker so if we add all of these up from here to here the sum tells me that it's 4.6 well that's twice the error bar that's what we expect great and if I sum up to here it says 4.75 that's 0 0.5 higher than the data so that's where you expect to be now highlight all that insert and I want a stacked bar chart well it hasn't quite worked there has it it's gonna be a normal bar chart so we're going to switch column and row data which will put all of those on a different series and you can kind of start to see already how this is working here are little thin green and orange lines here are going to become the error bar the caps that we have on these are going to become the error bars themselves and i'll just make this bottom half to no fill click on the top half no fill again and again you can start to see how this is going to work right so get rid of some uh, background lines that are a bit ugly and i'm going to fill the background a dark color just it's well, i'm working on my dark mode windows 11 experience now so well do some dark mode stuff 
So a dark background. And what we're going to do, well, the first thing, we're going to start drawing what our error bar is going to look like. I'm going to start, in this case, with a box. I'm going to make three copies of it. So I first learned to do this by uh, trying to recreate, um, oops, making this really terrible now. Right, trying to create a, uh, a replica of Excel's uh, Christmas graph where they have Christmas presents. And you could kind of sculpt in a Christmas present um, by using this technique. Anyway, I'm now going to set these ones on the outside to be no fill and no outline. And I'm going to select the one in the middle, right click, group those together. Now, if I control C that to copy it, I can then click on any of these series. I'll click on the top one and control V to paste it in. You can see I've now pasted that in. Now it's important to have these ones at the side that are transparent because if you just copied and pasted that square, it would fill the entire thing. So you need this on the side. And if you want to make it maybe narrower, you can make it narrower. Copy the whole thing, paste it in. So what I'm going to do is shape format that, no outline, fill that with white, control C, paste that in. And it is, it's just simply a case of pasting that in. And it is pasted in as an image. Now because I'm working with white, I'm just gonna fill some squares here to be a dark color so I can at least see what I'm doing. Uh, and that will be the bar that we're gonna use. Now what about the cap? In this case, I'm going to make it a bit wider, a bit narrower. Control C that and paste it in. And you can kind of see now we've got uh, a much beefier, meatier looking uh, error bar, not like the single line that you can get. Now you might want to make that a little bit more visually interesting. So maybe I'll highlight that and I'm going to put a shape out line around it that matches the background. And I'm going to ramp up the size of that to be quite thick. And then control C that, control V onto there. And you can see I've now put a little, like a separator, it's almost like a shadow on there, which I think is quite a uh, nice looking, um, kind of nice looking infographic -y, um, error bar there. It's got a, it's like it's been assembled. So that's a little bit more flexible. Maybe I'll do something else. I'll do maybe illustrations, shapes. I'll put in a circle maybe, and I'll do that shape outline, wide shape fill, none. Maybe make the line a little bit fatter. And I can control C that and put that in there. Ah, now it's shrunk down to be a bit of a novel. But what if I want it to be a complete circle? Well, I'll just increase that bar size. And because I've made this dynamic, it's not actually going to go above there. So if I can make that 0.5, it's going to always remain at the same point. Uh, now, if you are doing a circle like that, maybe you'd want to shift that up a bit. So you just have to take that into account here uh, and maybe add in a 0.5 there. In fact, it will be adding in a, adding that divided by a half roughly, isn't it? Yeah, and then it would stick around the center. Um, so we're going to remove that bit, send it back to 0 0.2. Just put our original one in there. In fact, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit because these always get pasted in kind of as like a picture. It will stretch and scale. So you kind of want to fiddle with it before you copy it, copy it and then paste it. That's kind of the one limitation of this technique. You can't edit this after it's pasted in. You've got to generate the shape again or edit your shape and paste it back in. So if you are going to put in any shapes, probably keep like a stash of them somewhere on your worksheet. Because remember, this is just like an area for you to work in. Throw it in there and then paste it later. So you can play around with that, put in any shape you like. Uh, now for the middle bit, I'm going to go for insert uh, my illustrations and icons. and. You can pick any of these if you're on the uh, newish version. I'm going to pick the one that's the, the continents. These are the 
seven I picked earlier. I only really picked them because I had six or seven rows of sample data when I was making it. So I thought, oh, continents match. So I'm going to go graphics fill, change these to white. They are in this little box so I can see them. And now with this graph highlighted, I'm going to get, oh, I need to actually put that data in. So I'm going to drag that box down and then drag all of this down to fill it up. And this is where you need to be a bit careful because the, the autofill is going to try and be clever. For instance, the top bar, it's all kept it as 0 0.2, fine, but it's incremented this one by one each time. So that's a bit odd. And it's also incremented the marker by one. So if we set that to one, that can drag down two lines and then it's got the hint there. So what we got there is what looks like uh, you know, your standard box and whisker chart, isn't it, already? Um, but I want to drag this to be where those yellow boxes are about approximately square. Now, if I drag it to be wide and they're not quite square, what I can do is boost the size of that marker. And you can see they now become a little bit more square. Uh, if I change the aspect ratio to be a bit thinner, maybe I want these to be much smaller maybe no point no point seven for instance Oops. positive no point seven of course uh, so that's another bit of manual jiggery pokery that you need to do unfortunately I haven't quite forget how to make that perfectly dynamic but okay uh, we will deal with that and so here we go there's our our box and this is still yellow we're gonna replace that so I'm gonna pick all I'll go for Antarctica first, Control C, and then click on my middle sequence, so all those orange ones highlighted, and then Control V. And you notice it fills in the entire uh, uh, series just as the previous one did. So I'm going to pick Australasia, Control C that. And if I click on here, that would paste it on everything. But if I click again, it's going to select just that data point, not the whole series. Now I can control V into there. Now I will go for Asia, go for uh, Europe, place in there, go for Africa next, control C, click, click again, control V, and I'll do North and South America. Click, click, control V, copy paste that, click, click. Control V. So there is a kind of infographic-y graphic. I'm just going to change that axis to be um, to be white so we can see it. So there we go. Oops, major units to two. So that is a little bit more black. So oops, drag that down. down. That's a little bit more interesting, right? Drag you around. And if we want to add the numbers, well, I've got this up here. Maybe I want to add data labels to it. So if I add my data labels and I edit these, I'll put the value from the cells. So we will stick values from there, take everything else off, make it white. Maybe we change the font to something a bit more. Arial Nova looks kind of trendy, doesn't it? I've got you selected there you go. and well that's that's kind of not those numbers is it? it's kind of I want to label the upper and lower bounds so I'm going to create that I'm going to create two new columns for plus and minus one being the data point plus the error bar one being the data point minus the error bar and let's send all that in um, and now if I change that I can put the plus is on there. Oops. Yeah, that is correct, isn't it? And label options, select range, that one. And for the bottom, I'm going to stick uh, some data labels here as well. Now, when I select these, I'm going to make that white, uh, I need to go inside end. I'm going to stick the value from cells being whatever the lower bound is. 
it'll just so happen to be the same as the value in that case, but we may as well keep it uh, consistent. So that column is, these two columns are the same, but we may as well uh, keep them consistently calculated in case we fiddle out with some fiddle with something else later. So what we got there is a nice looking infographic. I don't know what that stat means. It's just random data that are generated. They're more interesting looking uh, error bars. We can make that quite small and thin, in which case we'll need to change the aspect ratio of the marker by changing that down probably about plus 6.6. That looks about right. That's about the right projection for the Earth. Uh, and you you can fiddle about with this and just change all sorts of things with it uh, just to see what you like, what you feel like uh, doing. This is really just a, the introduction to a technique that you can play with using stacked bar charts and then pasting in images just to make it look more visually interesting. You can play about with this and come up with all sorts of um, neat ideas for it.